most gracious and heavenly Father, we come before you this day to honor our veterans, to honor those who gave all and those who gave some. We thank you, Lord, for the freedoms that we have because of their call to duty. But Lord, we also thank you that we too are soldiers for you in this world today. Soldiers that carry your message, that others may know your grace, your love, and your mercy, and the peace that you provide. So Lord, we ask now that your presence would be here through your Holy Spirit. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. It is a great honor today that it's Veterans Day on a Sunday. It is rare that it happens. It is rare in which we sometimes in the middle of the week or if Veterans Day is in the middle of the week, we'll mention it, but we don't necessarily share it in our community and in our prayers and in our pews. But today we are privileged to be able to do that. Because there isn't a life here that has not been touched by a veteran in one way or another. I look at this and I think about who veterans are and I know you're a Marine. (laughs) And for Marines, oh, you were a Marine, they will very quickly tell you, once a Marine... Boy, everybody knows that one, don't they? (laughs) Once a Marine, always a Marine. But I also have something to say. Once a veteran, always a veteran. A veteran is somebody who has served in the military. A veteran is somebody who has served either on the ground or in the air or in the Navy. But a veteran is somebody who has served their country. A veteran is somebody who has been discharged with anything other than dishonorable. A veteran has given their life to the service of their country. And every veteran out there will tell you that when you signed on the dotted line, you signed a blank check up to and including your what? Your life. Veterans. Veterans go where they're called to go. Veterans do the duty that they're called to do. Signing that blank check, they knew what could happen, but they still signed that check to serve their country. Recently, probably over the last probably eight, ten years maybe, if that long, we've been welcoming home veterans. We've been saying, thank you for your service. It's pretty easy for somebody to say, thank you for your service. I came out of that Vietnam era veteran time. And until really, maybe the last 12 years, maybe the last 10 years, I knew I was a veteran, but I haven't always, you know, exhibited that or claimed it. And then when it started becoming, thank you for your service, I'm like, I'm not a combat veteran. And I felt that. Like, did I really serve? I didn't serve in combat. And then somebody said to me, you have to realize you served. You signed that same blank check as anybody else. And while I did not have boots in the ground, I still served. When I was in Germany, there was a nuclear bomb sitting underneath my airplane that if they had said, we're going, I would have had 15 minutes to say goodbye to everybody I knew. I would have asked for about three or four more minutes. Some people say you probably didn't need 15, you only needed two. (laughs) But the fact is, is that we're still ready to go. We're prepared to go and to serve our country. Some people say it's a sacrifice that we gave. But I don't think it's a sacrifice. I think it's a service. And the families... Some people say, well, they sacrificed, but I say they served their country just as well because they supported that person who was serving and protecting our freedoms. They served as much as we did. And family members served and friends served by supporting our veterans who were either on the front line or were serving. Nobody is left unaffected by being 
we think of the word sacrifice and it's hard for us because it means giving something up unconditionally to somebody else or something else. Isn't that true? I mean, even in our common day life, we sacrifice certain things so that others may have or that we can accomplish something that needs to be accomplished. A sacrifice is not a senseless act. A sacrifice is a well thought out act. Today in our society we keep hearing these headlines about people sacrificing their lives to save lives because of shootings and things like that. A sacrifice is giving unconditionally without regard for self. A sacrifice is giving out of their heart. Today not only is it Veterans Day, but it is also Armistice Day, which came about after the great World War I, said the war that will end all wars. On the 11th hour, the 11th month, the 11th day, the armistice was signed. Over 35 million were killed. The Battle of Somme lasted for three and a half months. It was the war that was supposed to end all wars. But it didn't. But still people sacrificed their lives or served for their country, for honor. But I want us to take a look now. Because you wonder, if we're talking about service, we're talking about sacrifice, we're talking about service, how does it relate to our readings today? And the reality is, it relates perfectly. It relates perfectly. So what I want to do is give you a very brief synoptic view of each one of our readings today. To see what it means. It's not about sacrifice. It's about service. We might say it looks like sacrifice, but it really is about service and serving somebody else. Even though it appears to be sacrificially. I like Elijah. There's a lot of things about Elijah that, as a prophet we can grab onto because he's a lot like us but the thing is is if we read just a little bit before this and in this chapter God has called Elijah to go talk to King Ahab now most people don't read about King Ahab they don't know what he's like scriptures are very 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 explicit about who he is it says that King Ahab did evil in the sight of the Lord. In fact, he did more evil than all his predecessors. In other words, he just completely gave up on God. He built Asherah poles. He married that woman called Jezebel. Okay, you know where that comes from, right? He married a Jezebel. Well, she was the original. <laughs> And he walked away from God. In fact, it says that he was the one who antagonized God the most, provoked God the most, provoked his anger the most because he followed so far away. But Elijah, God calls Elijah. Elijah, you're my prophet. Elijah, you're the one who has to go speak to Ahab. Can you imagine that mission? Elijah, come here. Got your PCS assignment for you. You're going to go talk to... PCS means permanent change of station. For the Navy, it's a billet. You're going to go talk to Ahab. And by the way, the news isn't just turn and come back to God. The news is, guess what? It's not going to rain for three years. That's a really good message for Ahab, isn't it? That's his mission. He's got to go talk to Ahab and say it's not going to rain for three years. And in an agricultural society, what does that mean? You can imagine what it means. Drought. Crops aren't going to grow. We're going to get into desperate times. And then after that, God says, I need you to go down to this area and stay by the brook and I'm going to make sure that you're fed and I'm going to make sure until the water dried up and then he said go to Zarephath it's where we pick up our reading today and so he goes into Zarephath and he says there's a widow there that's going to feed you 
Now, a widow is supposed to be taken care of by family, but in this case, it wasn't. She had no meal. She basically had a little bit of meal. She had a little bit of oil. And she was picking up sticks so that she could make the last cake for her and her son so that they could eat it and then die. That doesn't sound like abundant times, does it? It's a desperate time in her life. And here comes Elijah. Uh, would you get me some water, please? And as she's going to get water, then he says, Oh, and bring me a cake. But I have only this meal and that. You hear the desperation in her voice that she's going to go and make this cake for her and her son so that they can die. That's desperation, isn't it? You can hear it. But then she says something. And she says, As the Lord your God... Notice she says, as the Lord your God. She didn't even believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. She was in a pagan territory where there were other gods. And yet she says, as, your, as the Lord your God has. And she went and did it. Out of obedience. Some would say it's sacrifice. I say it's service. Because before that God had spoken to her and told her to take care of Elijah. She didn't fully believe in him, but she went and did as Elijah asked. It was only after she agreed to do it, after she agreed to do what God had commanded her, that Elijah said, your oil and your meal will not run out until it rains. You see, she accepted. She accepted the mission. She accepted the service of serving Elijah. She had to trust Elijah. When he said, do not be afraid, for your meal and your oil will not run out. She had to trust him. And she had to trust God. And Elijah had to trust God that it wouldn't run out. Sacrifice or service? Some would look at it as a sacrifice. But when we serve God, He provides. When we serve God, we see His provision and His hand at work about us. When we serve God and are willing to do what He calls us to do, He'll never make us unsuccessful. He will always fulfill His Word. Sacrifice or service? She gave out of her heart, out of the hope that she would have, out of an obedience to God. And later she would come to realize who he is, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But it was only through obedience and doing that that she did. In our gospel lesson today, it's no different. Except in our time, in that time, it was the feast of the Passover. Jesus is in the temple and he's teaching. And this will actually be the last time that he's actually teaching in the temple. The next time he's in the temple is going to be before the Sanhedrin, before he's crucified. But it's the last time he's teaching up there. And as he's in the temple, he sees the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. The scribes are Pharisees that really know the law. But he sees them, some of them, not all of them. Now, you can't, it's not just one of those where you can say, well, that person is like this, so all of them are, it's not guilt by association. But he can see those that are arrogant, that are proud of who they are, that are exhibiting this pompousness, doing the long prayers, commanding people, well, you need to do this, and you need to do that, and... They're only doing it for their own gain, their own glory. They want the prestige. 
It's a time of abundance and it's a time when people are poor. It kind of sounds like today, isn't it? You know somebody's zip code and you know whether they're poor or not, right? Okay? It's no different. It's no different than that. They were looking for their own glory and he warns them about those because they're going to be the ones that are going to take from you. They're going to be the ones that want something from you. Not because of who they're serving, but because of what they want. In fact, in the scriptures it says that they, the Pharisees and Sadducees, weren't supposed to receive any money. And that if they did, and they were judging somebody, that verdict would be invalid because it's kind of like a bribe. You know? You think the Old Testament doesn't apply today, but it really does. He says, beware of them. And as he's watching them going around and it's like, hey, look how much money I put in. You know? He sees this widow come up. She has two copper coins. Our scripture says, worth a penny. Two copper coins. She didn't save one for herself. She gave both. Out of obedience to the Lord. Out of her love for the Lord. Because she knew that riches weren't in the coin. The riches are in the Lord. She gave what we would call sacrificially. Because that was her money for the day. That was all she had so she could eat that day. But she gave it up. Sacrificially? Or out of love and service to the Lord? That's why Jesus looked at the scribes and said they'd receive. They got greater condemnation. But this woman loved God so much and worshipped Him so much because she knew where the riches were. Not in the coin, but in our Lord. Sacrifice or service? She served the Lord with all her heart. She gave out of her heart, not out of obligation. She gave not so that anybody could see, oh, you poor little widow. No, she gave because this is what she had and she wanted to give it to God. Others would say it's sacrifice. For her, it's service. And in our reading in Hebrews, if we break that reading down, it says that he is the one who sacrificed once for all. The priest at that time would get the sacrifices. They would take them to the altar and they would do the sacrifice for your sins. And it was a repetitive thing. But Jesus came once for all. He died once for all. So that we might live eternally with our Father. He said the greatest love that somebody has is to lay down their life for another. Once for all. He gave everything. Sacrifice or service? For some, it would be that sacrificial lamb. But he served his father. He did, remember in the Garden of Gethsemane? Thy will be done, not mine. Thy will be done. He served our God. He gave himself for us. He laid down his life for us. There's a saying in the military, especially in your bat- if you're in battle, that there is no one left behind. We do not leave our brothers, whether they're wounded or have died on the battlefield, we do not leave them behind. We bring them home to be cared for. We bring them home. Veterans serve 
out of honor. Veterans serve out of duty. And veterans serve for our country. Christians, are we like those veterans? Veterans don't do it for their honor. They don't go, look at me, I was in the great war. They do it for you to serve so that there's freedom. But what about Christians? Do we serve a risen Lord in the same way? If you look at a patch on the right sleeve of that turn, it's an American flag. Did you ever notice what direction it's going? It's always going forward. It's always going forward to accomplish the mission that we've been called to. It's always moving forward so that there would be peace in the world eventually. What about Christians? Do we say we're Christians so we can be, Oh, Lord, look what I did for you. Or do we say, Lord, I'm here to serve you. I'm here to bring that gospel. I'm here to share your grace, your love, and your mercy. And that's my mission. I will be a good and faithful servant to you. I had the hardest time when somebody would say, thank you for your service. Because I wasn't a combat veteran. But the time I did serve was a time in which we needed it in the Cold War. I realize it's an honor and it's a privilege to serve my country. An honor and privilege that nobody can take away. But I also know it's an honor and a privilege to serve my risen Lord. It's an honor and privilege. It's my duty to serve Him. It's my honor to serve Him. And it's for His glory. Amen. I had the privilege of being with Alyssa at the end, doing last rites for her. Alyssa came out of a Jewish background and became a Messianic Jew. She came to know who Jesus Christ is as Lord and Savior. And the time that I had with Jim and Carl and all, it was an amazing time, an amazing time of faith with Alyssa. And it's amazing to see how God, even in these circumstances, was honored by them and by Alyssa. Amazing to see the faith that ready to take that threshold step and be received into the arms of a loving Lord. The faith of a family that said, I know where she'll be and we will be together again. That's faith. That's serving a Lord who's risen. And so, Jim, as you read this, know that my heart is with your heart. This is a poem that I found in a V&A book called Gone From My Sight. But before I read it, I'm going to take an extra liberty. Uh, Father was talking about sending... Elijah to seek Ahab, who was with Jezebel. One surgery Alyssa had some years ago, she was supposed to be outpatient, and they decided to keep her overnight because she was bleeding a little bit more than they expected. So as they put her in the room and the nurse, male nurse came in to talk to her, he was trying to assess her for her orientation. So he asked her the normal stuff, and when it got to her asking her name, she looked at him with a straight face and said, Jezebel. (laughs) (laughs) And that's our Alyssa. (laughs) 
I am standing upon the seashore. A ship at my side spreads her, spreads her white sails to the morning breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength. I stand and watch her until at length she hangs like a speck of white cloud just where the sea and the sky come to mingle with each other. Then someone at my side says, There, she is gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. She is just as large in mast and hull and spar as she was when she left my side. And she is just as able to bear the load of living freight to her destined port. Her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at the moment when someone at my side says, There, she is gone, there are other eyes watching her coming. And other voices ready to take up the glad shout, Here she comes! <laughs> and that is dying. Thank you, Alyssa, for 34 wonderful years. Amen. Let's pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, you are the comforter of all. You have provided for everything that they've needed. And now, Lord, we come to you to ask for one more provision, a comfort in their hearts, a peace in their hearts, the joy of the privilege of having Alyssa in their lives, the joy of 34 years that Jim and Alyssa had. So, Lord, I pray for a special comfort for them. And may we look forward to the day when we are rejoined and there will be somebody waiting for us. Here they come. Amen. Amen. I like that he chose the sailing one because he's a squid. He's navy. (laughs) Only he would understand about the mast and the hull and all that. You know, God is so good to us. He really is. We serve a great, loving God. Today, we honor our veterans. We honor their families. We honor the Gold Star families who have lost ones in our time of war. We honor all those because they gave not out of need, but out of service, out of heart. Who are we as Christians who claim to be Christians? Let us serve in that same zeal, out of our heart for a risen Lord. Not looking at our circumstances, like the widow with Elijah, but looking at the promise of the Lord and the obedience of Him. Not like the Pharisees who were there for fluff and stuff, but let us be like that widow who gave two coins because of her love for God and knowing it's not in what we own, but in who He is. And let us always be mindful of what Christ did for us. He came. He served. I came to serve, not to be served, He said. Veterans serve, not to be served. Christ came to serve, not to be served. As Christians, let us serve, not to be served. And when we do that, and we have that in our heart, we can go forth into the world in peace. We can have that good courage. We can hold fast that which is good. We'll render no one evil for evil. When somebody is faint-hearted, we'll strengthen them. When somebody is afflicted, we'll help them. When somebody is weak, we will help support them. We will honor all persons. And we will love and serve the Lord. Because we live in the power of the Holy Spirit, which He gives us. 
And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. And at 1 o'clock today, you can go and honor our veterans at the Riverview Memorial Park as we celebrate Veterans Day, as we remember Armistice Day, as we remember those who served for our freedoms. In the name of Jesus. Our going forth song is My Country Is of Thee. It's in our hymnal. It's hymn number 117. 717. My Country Tis of Thee. <laughs> Thy land of my pilgrim's pride. go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.